Hello, I'm Tawny Jackson, and I will be walking you through the tools and resources to help you complete Requirement 1, Program Management of your Heart Failure Certification. Requirement 1 focuses on the structure of your Heart Failure Program Committee, your committee's goals and meeting activity, and the development that is the backbone of your committee, your program charter. What is a Heart Failure Program Committee? This is the group of individuals who manage the Heart Failure Program at your organization. The Certification Program Manual refers to this group of individuals as the Heart Failure Interprofessional Committee. At least one representative from each discipline that cares for the heart failure patient should sit on your committee, as well as at least one representative from administration. Please note that your heart failure program committee may be a standalone committee, or it may be incorporated into an existing overarching committee such as QAPE. It is important to understand the difference between your heart failure program committee and the group of clinicians who round to discuss heart failure patient care. While some of the members on the rounding team may also sit on the Heart Failure Program Committee, rounding meetings are not considered to be Heart Failure Program meetings. Program committee meetings should have an agenda that discuss program details, such as staff education plans, reviews of heart failure specific care documents, and heart failure performance measures, as well as the related performance improvement plans. Heart failure minutes should be taken at these meetings. The program charter is a strategic plan for your committee. It outlines your committee's mission, goals, and scope. It defines the roles and responsibilities of each staff member who sits on the committee. It clarifies how often your committee meets as well as attendance expectations. The charter can be a comprehensive document that houses all decisions related to your heart failure program, such as staff education requirements, patient education requirements, and how often clinical pathways and protocols are reviewed. We encourage you to develop the charter into a document that has all the information related to your program in one place. Think of it as a blueprint that would provide an outsider with a thorough understanding of your heart failure program. Clinical practice guidelines. Clinical practice guidelines are the cornerstone of your heart failure program. They are recommendations on how to diagnose and treat a medical condition and are written for doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. The clinical practice guidelines are intended to optimize patient care. They are informed by a systematic review of scientific evidence and an assessment of the benefits and harms of alternative care options. Your committee should decide which published guidelines you will be adopting as you build your heart failure program. And these guidelines should be used in the development of your heart failure clinical pathways, protocols, and order sets. Common heart failure guidelines you may utilize can be from the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, or AMDA, the Society for Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine. If your charter does not state which clinical practice guidelines your committee has adopted, then attach a separate piece of documentation with this information. Make sure to address how often your committee reviews and updates program materials that are based on the clinical practice guidelines. The final piece of documentation you want to submit for requirement one are your Heart Failure Program Committee meeting minutes. Your Heart Failure Program Committee should have been meeting for at least six months before you apply for certification. And they should be meeting at least quarterly. Meeting minutes should include robust discussions regarding your program development and maintenance, heart failure measures and metrics, and performance improvement initiatives. To meet this requirement, submit six months worth of heart failure committee meeting minutes. Now I'm gonna take you to our healthcare network. If you have not had an opportunity to sign up and join the healthcare network, I highly encourage you to do so. You will find this as a great robust tool for uh, tool educational tools and resources and also great information to help prepare you for certification. So when you log in, you're going to go to my groups. You're going to choose which certification you're currently looking to apply for. Then when you click on my groups, you're going to click to the resources section. 
And again, go ahead and click which certification you're currently looking to seek. I'm gonna pick skilled nursing heart failure certification. And as you scroll down here, you can see this is a robust library of additional tools and resources to help you through as you're seeking certification. There's a really nice filter option. So if you're looking for something specific, you have the ability to utilize our filter tool. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click filter and I'm gonna click add filter and I'm going to highlight standard resources and templates. So as you can see, this will bring up all the requirements. You'll wanna click on which requirement you're currently working on and if there's any additional tools and resources that you're looking as it relates to that requirement, I'm gonna click on requirement one and click apply. So as you can see, it brings up our skilled nursing facility heart failure library. And this brings up all the tools and resources that we have posted to the healthcare network as it relates to requirement one. So as you can see, we've included a sample heart failure charter template, We've included a template on uh, an interprofessional heart failure committee overview. We've also included um, heart failure program committee meetings minutes template. So again, take the opportunity to check out our healthcare network and all the additional tools and resources that we have posted on this website. This concludes the video tutorial around requirement one. I hope you found this to be helpful and valuable and have a great day.